Joining me now from here in Washington is Nina Shang. She's the founder of China Money Network, a new media company focused on investing in China. She is also the author of Red AI, Victories and Warnings from China's Rise in Artificial Intelligence. Always great to see you there, Nina. Great to see you. Thank you for having me. Well, we saw what is happening with driverless taxis in Shanghai. Tell us more about the focus China has on artificial intelligence right now and what kind of impact it wants it to have on everyday life. So uh, for driverless cars, um, actually this has been a long time in the coming because uh, a few years ago, four or five years ago, people were hoping that a commercial operation of driverless cars will be able to arrive you know, a little bit sooner than uh, what actually happened. But now this final step of uh, actually having commercial operation, meaning you know, charging riders uh, for the ride, is finally here, so that's great news. Um, in terms of China's overall strategy for uh, developing its AI sector, we have seen in the past, you know, four, five, six years, uh, uh, China has been very, very uh, aggressive and ambitious in terms of AI application, particularly for, uh, you know, during the pandemic, uh, COVID pandemic, how the country utilized uh, artificial intelligence uh, to the maximum efficiency in terms of uh, uh, controlling and taming the pandemic. So it, it definitely has had the most comprehensive and deep um, and uh, uh, very penetrating uh, effect on everyday life and on how factories are run and how businesses are, are run. I want to ask you about the Shanghai area of Shenzhen and the importance of this innovation zone. Uh, we've heard about its physical location in the Greater Bay Area and its favorable business environment for companies. So what does it all mean to have all of that? You have the brain power all together in one place. Well, I think uh, for China's um, next step, uh, you know, the near term future is to uh, utilize uh, technologies like AI to really upgrade uh, the, the country's economy and, and the digital economy, the manufacturing sector uh, to, uh, to achieve a number of goals. Number one, to, uh, to have uh, the industry uh, a little bit more uh, self-reliant and safe from external uh, disruptions. And also to, you know, basically remake the economy to a much more smarter and a much more efficient one. Where do things stand then in China with regulations and concerns over privacy? We have China's data security law, for example. Is that keeping up with the fast growing technologies uh, underway and things getting things to market? I think in terms of technology uh, regulation, China has certainly uh, been outperforming on, on this respect. Uh, this past year, we've seen some really major uh, laws in terms of uh, data security and uh, personal information protection uh, in China, uh, you know, quickly uh, uh, um, uh, completed and also implemented. So on this part, uh, China, uh, Beijing has been quite efficient, you know, comparing to some other uh, countries where, you know, this process usually takes years. Um, so I think on that front, China is in a good place. Now we're going to look for a specific, you know, uh, compliance to these uh, very strict uh, rules on um, privacy protection and data security um, uh, uh, protection. So, so those are very good things and positive developments for China's tech sector overall. Oh, great to get your take. Uh, Nina Shang, thank you so much for joining us from here in Washington.